Will Plitt, thank you for uh, joining us today. We um, we're in a in the in the phase of our class now where we're establishing things and we're getting uh, stuff like our rhythm and balance established as a church. We're establishing leadership structures. We're establishing you know different ministries of the church, kids ministries, uh, small group type things, uh, how we want to live on mission in our city, all those type of things. But you know I think it's really important. We've briefly t- touched on this earlier in the class, but really building a a sense of uh, collaboration with other churches and pastors and Christian leaders, businesses in the community for the sake of the community. So it's more about collaborating for the sake of something bigger than just our church. And uh, so I want to kind of uh, discuss that with you today. Uh, I know you are the executive director of Christ Together. Um, I think you still direct the Southeast um, as well. Plus, um, there in Winston Salem, you kind of oversee everything there. So you wear several hats within Christ Together. Um, but you were my pastor and mentor for at least two years while we were in Winston. Salem at 121 Church and uh, continue still uh, still continue to be a mentor and friend. So thanks for joining us today. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, uh, walk us through a little bit of uh, uh, the purpose of Christ Together as a network. Uh, we want to just give give our students some idea of how people are, are, are pastors and churches and uh, Christian leaders are collaborating and getting together for something more. So would you mind just kind of walking us through what is the purpose or the goal of Christ Together? Um, across the U.S. and Canada? Yeah, I, I would say uh, the purpose and goal has, has been, um, has been a, a stirring in the hearts of a lot of pastors uh, over the course of the last decade or so. As we looked out uh, into the North American landscape and we continued to see the greatest decline of Christianity on our watch, and it's the conviction that, that all of us as pastors and, and ministry leaders will stand before Jesus and give an account for what we did with his name personally and the stewardship of all that God has entrusted to us. Um, and so really the vision for what is now Christ Together was really birthed out of, out of the conviction of individual pastors scattered all across the U.S. that eventually, by God's Spirit, found each other and began to ask the question, um, is there more that we could do together uh, than we could do apart? Um, what would it look like for the church instead of continuing to divide and splinter? Um, what if it actually began to unite around God's heart and intent for the nature and purpose of the church and what and, and for God's mission. You know, how might we unify and strategize for um, what God wants to do in our cities? So three kind of looming questions um, that really began to haunt each of us were, if we ask the question, what does God want for our city? How would we answer that? Uh, then the second question, um, which we can answer that with great confidence because that question rises up out of Scripture. God has told us what He wants. Uh, then the second question becomes, well, what would it look like if God did that? Um, and then the third question is, uh, which is the action, the verb uh, question of what would it take to get there? So these questions really begin to kind of loom in, in our hearts and then um, it, it was really out of the John 17 passage of when you exegete that passage rightly and understand it correctly, what Jesus is getting at in the high priestly prayer, which he echoes a couple different times is he talks about this, this unity, uh, the unity that the Father and the Son and the Spirit have, that they are one, uh, and the call for us to be one. And then, and then Jesus answered the question, well, why should we be unified? And he makes it very clear so that the world may know that you sent me. So we began to ask this question of, could it be that the missing apologetic to a lost world in cities across North America is the result of the lack of unity among churches? Um, or you could ask it a different way. Does the world the lost world know that Jesus is divine. He's been sent by the Father by the way that Christians and churches united for God's mission. So that right there will mess you up in in a very profound way. Uh, Theologically, you have to now begin to wrestle with, um, do I view myself as um, 
the pastor of a church in a city? Is that what I'm primarily accountable before Jesus to, or is there something more? Is it, is it, do I view myself rather as a pastor of the church in a city? And the answer is yes to both, but too often in the North American context, we default to I'm a past, uh, the pastor of a church. And so we work very hard to build our, our brand, uh, to build a church around our personality. And the reality is in no city anywhere in North America or the world, no one church will ever reach a city by themselves. So I think there's this very strong biblical precedent um, that I always like to lay first before we talk about, you know, the, why we're doing what we're doing. If you understand the why, you will you will then understand the how and the what. Um, but too often we shift to the how and the what and don't understand the why. And I think the biblical precedent you see is, you know, when Paul writes letters to the church of Colossae or Ephesus or, you know, on and on and on you can go. It's not, it wasn't, you know, First Baptist Church of Ephesians. It was the church of Ephesus. We see that Jesus addressed the, the churches in Revelation the same way. So there is, a, there is the nature of understanding um, theologically that, that position. So all that to say, um, the vision for Christ Together was birthed out of, originally we looked at, our, at the United States and we saw 320 million Americans um, every man, woman, and child. And so the vision for um, Christ Together really emerged um, and kind of got summed up this way is that we, um, we want to give every man, woman, and child repeated opportunities to see, hear, and respond to the good news. And that includes 320 million Americans. And our best estimation in the U.S. now is that when you get underneath the cultural Christianity of uh, professing but non-practicing Christians, that there's about a 10% population now in the U.S. that you could categorize as Christians that have a true f- saving faith and are showing fruit and evidence that they're trying to orient their lives by the help of the Spirit uh, to a biblical worldview. And city after city is dropping beneath the 10% threshold of lost and unchurched. Um, You see it all over the place, uh, from the Northeast to the Southeast, to Bible Belt, to West Coast, to Pacific Northwest. So that was the conviction. And so the churches um, banded nationally to come together for every man, woman, and child, really from the conviction of John 17, of how might we unite the church once again for God's glory and His mission. I've got the slide up where uh, has a uh, this is from your envisioning slides where seventy five percent of the population are in one hundred eighty four cities. Um, yeah. So why are you guys focusing on some of these larger these one hundred eighty four cities first um, as part of a strategy? Yeah, w- w- the strategy about four years ago emerged out of that when we began to look at look at cities and the numbers that you just quoted the one hundred eighty four cities. Um, and those 184 cities are categorized by a, uh, an MSA, a metro statistical area of 250,000 or greater. Mm-hmm. And when you begin to look at the hard numbers, you realize that 75% of the U.S. population lives there and more and more people are migrating there. So if we're talking about every man, woman, and child, um, it was a good place for us to begin, yeah. a good place for us to start. That's not the ending place, but if you have a fastball, you know, it's coming right down the middle and you've got one swing. We felt that that was a good place to take a, take a first swing at it. And, and there are many, uh, I mean, even my own mission board, North American mission board is focused on planting in 32 cities, the 32 mm-hmm. uh, most populated plus most lost cities in the uh, mm-hmm. U.S. and Canada. So, I mean, I, I know there's a lot of theories um, about, you know, which is, which is, you know, is one better than the other. And I think, you know, we have to go after both. I think, you know, yeah. I think as you reach some of these uh, metro areas, the rural are blessed as people are sent out from there. Um, so yeah. I think it's, I think it's a, it's a great strategy. Um, walk us through quickly. We got about five minutes left, and I really want you to walk us through the target diagram um, because, mm-hmm. um, and, and the reason why I think it's so important to for you know aspiring church planters or those who want to be involved in church planting, revitalization, replanting to hear is, um, you know, this concept of what you kind of laid out as a, as a vision and the purpose, but also um, 
the how and the why and what um, really shaped me in such a profound way that it completely changed my thinking on church planting of the last two years. Um, yeah. And this is not the kind of stuff you read in a lot of books. Um, this is the kind of, it's, it's a different operating system as um, Christ Together often talks about, of just kind of thinking differently. You know, what mm-hmm. if I was not just trying to plant a church, but trying to reach a city? That's going to change my mission and strategy completely. Yeah. Um, it's going yeah. to alter what I do. And um, so if you uh, t- take uh, four or five minutes and walk us through the, um, the diagram because, yeah. um, and uh, I know that uh, whenever you've, I've, I've heard you, uh, you know, give this envisioning talk um, in front of many pastors and I've given it as well. Um, when we were trying to get pastors together in Winston-Salem, which we got to what, about 15 or 20 who are now gathering together mm-hmm. on a regular basis towards this. And so it was two years of kind of working together forward this, but I know you mentioned things, you know, you can put other things in the circles, uh, other yeah. thing in the target. So I've got a picture of the target up, and the first one is unity. So maybe just walk us through, mm-hmm. um, you know, what could be in the target, and then explain the the four aspects of of the target as well. Yeah, yeah. What you're referring to, Dustin, is kind of the scope or the aim of of Christ together, and every every church, every leader, every denomination, every network has to identify what you put in the center, um, and usually what you what you start with is what you finish with. So it's really, really mission critical um, to identify what you're putting in the center. And so for us, and and there's a lot of a lot of the biblical things you can even put in the center. So you know, as you walk through those slides, the first one is unity. Um, You know, you can gather churches together to be unified, to have fellowship, to to pray with one another, to be friends. We believe that's a very important thing, and that is a, a a part of um, gospel saturation for every man, woman, and child. But in and of itself, I think Jesus addresses in John 17, why are we unified? We're not unified for the sake of unity. We're unified for the sake of mission. Um, so you can put um, you know, social justice, mercy, and justice um, in the center. You know, We need to be about you know, the good works of a city. And if we just will meet the most pressing needs, then that, that somehow will be enough. But it never answers the question fully. Uh, about the mission of God and making disciples. And so the good news has to be balanced with the good works. You don't have one or the other, but they go hand in hand. Um, so that's why we did not put good works in, in the center. Um, you can put prayer in the center. Um, I can promise you, if you're going after every man, woman, and child in your city, you'll be on your face praying. Yeah. Um, but prayer in and of itself doesn't mobilize uh it transformed believers into God's mission without a plan, without a strategy. Um, you can put church planting in the center. And this was, as you know, my story, the big paradigm shift. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of cities planting a lot of churches, but when you look at the numbers of lostness, lostness is growing at a faster rate than new churches being planted. Yeah. So we have to address the culture and the DNA of, of leaders and what they're planting Um, you know, are you planting a collecting community, gather all you can, or are you actually planting a mobilizing community? Those are two different paradigms. So for us, when, when we looked at the scope and aim, we, we put, um, God's mission, uh, for every man, woman, and child, gospel saturation in the center. And then we said that there's, there's four convictions or four priorities that we believe have to be present in a city in order to see gospel saturation happen. And I'll preface it by saying that this is a lifelong vision. This doesn't get accomplished in one, three, five, ten years. This is over over the duration and longevity of the tenure of of, of the pastors of of, of the churches in the city. So the first one is mobilization. And that's basically just saying that where you're asking God's people to own the lostness of a defined people in a defined place. So we ask churches and Christians uh, uh, in, the, in the city that are participating in the vision for gospel saturation to draw three circles. The first one is a circle of influence. Um, those are where God has placed you with uh, people who are far from God but close to you, where you live, where you learn, where you work, where you play. How am I on mission to those around me? The second circle is a church drawing a circle around where God has sovereignly placed them to say, would we be willing to own the lostness as a congregation and then with other congregations in close proximity? And in a third circle, uh, like, for example, Calgary, which is broken up by many different 
um, kind of districts uh, or zones or uh, however you guys reference that. Um, but drawing a circle, like we have a responsibility for the larger circle of our city and where we own that with others. Uh, transformation is the discipleship crisis that that we're facing. Um, and that's just God's people empowered by his spirit, growing in the character and competencies of Jesus. Um, it's answering two fundamental questions that Dallas Willard poses um, in, in reference to discipleship. Um, do you have a discipleship plan for your church and is your plan working? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've talked uh, previously in this course of having a uh, very clear discipleship pathway that really yes. lets, you, lets every member know how they can be about God's mission and how they're going to that's not it. grow, but also do. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's the big one. You know, what is, how do you define a disciple? What is a disciple? Um, how do you make one? Then how do you begin to measure whether or not you're actually getting at it um, is the third question. Um, and then the third quadrant, which we've already touched on, I won't spend much time on it, is collaboration. Uh, and that's just God's people partnering, um, you know, the, the full body, one church of a city partnering together uh, for the gospel saturation of their place. Um, and so it's, it's saying no one church, no one network, no one denomination can get that done alone. So how do we partner together around the person and work and mission of Jesus and let the secondary issues settle where they are? And, and how do we join together there? And lastly, it would be um, multiplication. If you're going to go after every man, woman, and child, you've got to create greater gospel access. So multiplication is um, not only multiplying new churches, but it's multiplying disciples, leaders, and churches that eventually will reproduce at, at all levels. Um, so to, to get every man, woman, and child, you've got to mobilize each man, woman, and child with a vision for the harvest. Um, so anyway, those are in a very succinct way the, the four priorities and four convictions that we believe have to be present. Then we as a network kind of populate those four priorities with really effective resources to help churches um, go after that, that vision for their city. Yeah, I know uh, two of, uh, one of the uh, key ways that uh, kind of see you know, let this kind of the rubber meet the road, so to speak, is um, you know, like in Winston-Salem when I was there, we were getting pastors together on a monthly basis, not just to pray and share struggles, which a lot of pastors do that and they need that. But for us, it was it was fellowship, but it was also, okay, let's discuss what's going on in our city. What are the biggest needs? What are the, um, you know, um, I, I can't believe exactly how you phrase it, the um, the, the, the most pressing needs of the city and how can we mm -hmm. as churches go after that which we know there are tangible needs or there are gospel needs um, mm -hmm. and especially um, like in, uh, in there in North Carolina a big need was revitalization how are we going to help struggling churches that was a big need yeah. um, sure. we also needed to do church planting and so that was one way of getting the guys together but, the, but Christ together also has a field guide that kind of walks um, you know uh, it's a you kind of a session you study together which um, I've used some pieces of the field guide in some other areas in the course and whatnot. but um, uh, it's, it's a great great tool and so um, and I know our time is up. Uh, I do do appreciate you uh, kind of walking us through this because I really want our students to see that no matter where God takes them, whether it's into church planting, into uh, some type of support role for church planting, whether it's revitalizing, whatever it is, whatever ministry God has them, um, the idea that we're going after saturating our community and our city with the gospel, um, not just building our church. Um, to me, that's a that's a that's a game changer. It's, it literally yeah. has changed everything that I, um, you know, if when I was writing a prospectus for Calgary, um, if I would have written it three years ago, it would have been very Dustin centered and would have looked like all the textbooks you read. Um, yeah. But uh, over the years of just being around uh, you and some of the others in our area who are just going after it and seeing how I think you're in seventy cities, Christ is yeah. in seventy cities across the U.S. and Canada, and I think that's uh, just fantastic as uh, you guys are bringing this. Not just about building a Christ together brand, but it's about building God's kingdom and providing yeah. us those tools. So, Will, thank you for uh, joining us today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you so much, Dustin, for all you're doing. All right, thank you. Take care, man.